I'm Walter Hudzik, one of the board members of Northwest Youth Services. Thank you for joining us for Dine In to Make a Difference. As it turns out, 2020 is a year to change things up, keep us on our toes and try new things. Normally, Northwest Youth Services hosts an annual gala at Bellingham Technical College. But with the impact of COVID-19, we've taken the opportunity to creatively connect and share our mission in unique ways. Dine In to Make a Difference was born of that quest to reach people where they are, much like our practice of meeting youth where they are. This year, we wanted to try something new and bold to drive awareness about who we at Northwest Youth Services are and how you can support us. We depend on our community's support and rely on your donations to keep our programs going. With that being said, the most fun way to enjoy this cooking series and to support us is to join our VIP viewing experience. When you sign up to be a VIP, you get an ingredient box handpicked just for you and personally delivered to your door with everything you need to make the meal. Now, none of what you are about to see is possible without the support from our brilliant sponsors. Please join me in thanking our presenting sponsors, Imco Construction, People's Bank, and Birch Equipment. And of course, Cosmos Bistro, Big Rock Roadhouse, and La Fiamma Wood Fire Pizza, and Veritas Media for producing this show. In addition to our presenting sponsors, special thanks to Rice Insurance, Larson Gross Certified Public Accountants, CPI Plumbing and Heating, Seeking Health, Logan Creek Senior Living, Peace Health, Bellingham Cold Storage, Land Title and Escrow, Windermere Property Management of Oak Harbor, Marla Chapa Keller Williams, the Hanson Home Team Keller Williams, and Skagit Regional Health. Thank you to everyone who has contributed to this program. For updates on upcoming projects and to stay current with what's happening, please take a moment to follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletters. Our first episode of Dine In to Make a Difference features a local favorite in Bellingham, Cinnamon Berg from Cosmos Bistro. To introduce Cinnamon and the meal we'll be making tonight, I'm now going to hand things off to Holly Brown, Vice President of Marketing at People's Bank, board member, and longtime supporter of Northwest Youth Services. Thanks again for joining us, and I hope that you enjoy your experience. to La Fiamma's Commissary Kitchen in downtown Bellingham. I have Cinnamon Berg, owner of Cosmos Bistro, here with us today, and she's gonna be telling us a little bit about the recipe that you guys are gonna be doing this evening. Cinnamon, tell us a little bit about where your restaurant is located and what your ambiance is like. Uh, my restaurant is at 1151 North State Street, and uh, the ambiance is uh, it's really eclectic because that's kind of my vibe. Um, my food, the restaurant, it, it's all really eclectic. It's kind of, um, it's different wines and beers, uh, you know, kind of whatever the season is or whatever I'm feeling at the moment. Um, menu has a base that stays the same, but we do a lot of specials and a lot of seasonal things. And What is your most popular dish? That would have to be the pork adobo. Um, and we have it on every menu that, that we have. We have it on happy hour, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a, a Filipino pork dish that's spicy and has some vinegar and, and soy, so it's, it's a multi-dimensional, really delicious, spicy pork dish. Wonderful. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what is on the menu for us tonight? Tonight we are making um, a salad of all, all sorts of local greens and uh, local veggies and a, a really like earthy, beautiful uh, roasted vegetable soup so we can kind of capture all of the vegetables that are available to us right now. Wonderful. How long should this dish take somebody to prepare? Probably, you know, an hour, hour and a half maybe, okay. just depending on how long it takes you to cut things and the roasting takes a little bit of time, but then once you once you've roasted everything, easy then, easy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You're just going to throw it in the blender and easy. And any skill sets can cook this meal, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I have faith. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to take a break and learn a little bit more about Northwest Youth Services. Northwest Youth Services is a nonprofit organization serving young people ages 13 to 24 experiencing homelessness in Whatcom, Skagit, and Island counties. 
Our dedication to area youth spans over four decades. We support youth in identifying goals and building skills necessary to reach their own sense of stability. Northwest Youth Services offers housing, street outreach, help finding a job or enrolling in school, connection to mental health services, support for LGBTQ plus youth, restorative justice for juvenile offenders, and referrals to other services in the community. We believe that all children and youth deserve a safe, nurturing environment, that adolescence is an important time of transition, and that youth need and deserve compassion, encouragement, and support. We also believe that children and youth should be recognized and valued as a vital part of our community, and that change is needed within society to create a safe and healthy environment for children and youth. At Northwest Youth Services, we are youth-centered. We see the potential for all people to grow and change, and we provide opportunities and tools to facilitate that process. We advocate for the interests of children and youth within their families and communities. We honor the unique process of each individual and family to meet their challenges and make their own choices for creating health and well-being. We understand that each individual exists within the context of a family, and we work holistically to foster healthy relationships. We meet people where they're at, listen with compassion, honor differences, and build on strengths. We believe that all individuals are important and deserve quality services, and we strive to provide an environment that actively embraces diversity and differences. We look for innovative solutions and take initiative to provide and promote quality services. That's a little bit about our organization. Now I just want to encourage you to partner with us by making a donation of any amount to support our community's young people. Donating is easy. Just click the link in this video description and go to nwys.org and click Donate Now. Okay, so tonight we're making a roasted vegetable soup. And we're gonna start with some beautiful garlic, uh, shallots, we'll roast both of those together. Um, some fresh, sweet Walla Walla onions. These are uh, some local apples, some Gravenstein apples that just adds a, a sweetness to the soup. These are, um, are the golden beets. This is my favorite beet to use in all sorts of different things. This is a Chayo Chayogia beet, and this is a red beet. Um, the, this is a delicata squash, which is just coming on this year. I'm really excited about that. Um, orange and some fennel. And then for the salad, we're going to be using all sorts of different greens. So we have the, the frise chicory, which is so delish. Um, and then the, the rainbow chard and lacinato kale and sugar loaf chicory and some more fennel. Tell me a little bit about where you got this produce because this is beautiful produce. Most of it is from Springtime Farm, which is in Everson. I've been friends with them for a while. They're great people and obviously great farmers. This um, beet is incredible. It's gorgeous. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. yeah. They, and they grow all of these things. The apples are from Cloud Mountain Farm. Wonderful, thank you. We're gonna take a little bit of a break again and we're gonna learn a little bit more about Northwest Youth Services and the communities that we serve. Northwest Youth Services has grown in response to the need for supportive programs for youth since its inception in 1976. Although our initial service area began in Bellingham, we have expanded to offer services to unstably housed young people throughout Whatcom County and Skagit County. Most recently, we've expanded our housing supports into parts of Island County, and we're having a big impact. Last year, 1,290 people sought our support. In 2019, 217 youth exited homelessness 
and entered into safe and stable housing, and 542 school-aged youths participated in preventative activities aimed at addressing risk. But we still have a lot of work to do. On any given night in Washington State, there are 1,300 unaccompanied young people who are considered homeless. When we look at communities affected by homelessness, we know that black youth in Washington make up 24% of the homeless youth population, even though they represent only 6% of the total population. LGBTQ plus youth are also disproportionately represented in the homeless youth population, with up to 40% of homeless youth identifying as LGBTQ+. Supporting our organization is easy. Of course, financial gifts are important to help end youth homelessness. You can also sign up for our mailing list or follow us on Facebook. All of these links can be found in the description below. Thanks for your support. Welcome back. We're going to learn a little bit about how to prepare the first portion of this meal. So, what are we what are we doing here? We're going to roast some of our veggies first. Um, I'll just give you a little demo of, of how I cut some of the things that are a little tougher to do, or how I cut them so that we can roast them all together. Um, I'll, I'm going to start with the onion, and this is how I, I generally cut onions. First of all, I have a very sharp knife, um, and we're just gonna do what's called the mirepoix cut, and that is just a kind of a rough chop. So we're gonna cut everything kind of the same size, so it roasts at the same rate. Is there any secret to cutting onions to make you not cry? I have not found something. I have not found anything that actually works, but I heard that you might know. Well, I'm gonna see what you do and see if it's the same, same okay. way that I cut an onion. All right. Well, this is, I'm, I'm not going to do a, a dice or a okay. julienne or anything. I'm just doing a pretty rough cut. So okay. that's, my, that's my rough cut that I'm going to do right now. Perhaps just the speed at which you're cutting it prevents crying. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's <laughs> it. Yeah, I think that could have something to do with it. Because you're not crying, so. No, no. And we're, we're, yeah, we have to cut a lot of onions in the yeah. kitchen too. So. so I think you have something there. All right, there's the onion. And then we're gonna cut the beets. And uh, for this recipe, I'm just gonna use the golden beets. Um, but I am gonna cut the tops off of all of these beets so I can add them to the, the salad later. Oh, great. I love the, the beet greens in, in salads. They're so nice. You, but you can add them to other things too. Like we could you know, do a chiffonade and add them at the end or, or to the soup, or we could you know, save them for a different the onions are kicking in. There you go. <laughs> I should have cut that one work. first. <laughs> so, so we are going to save these for the salad we are gonna later? We're going to save these for the okay. salad. I'm going to hand them to you. And then we'll do some fun stuff with beet greens. But yeah, okay. save your beet greens, people, because they're really delish. So for the beets, depends on how, how big your beet is. But um, basically do the same kind of size that we did with the onion. And this guy has a little bit of a uh, little bit of discoloring in the middle, so I'm just going to cut that out. And you wouldn't know that until you open it up. We're going to peel the beets after we're done cooking them. They're a little easier to peel that way. Or if you if you feel more comfortable, you can peel them now. But I I just it's easier for me to just go ahead and peel them later. I have scrubbed all of these veggies too. Nice scrubber. Okay, I'm gonna use the, the bottom part of the fennel too, and uh, the top parts we're gonna save for something else too, if I can help. Oh, them. sure. So the fennel has a little bit of a um, butt here that you wanna cut that out, but it's not super essential for this application. Um, you could easily use, you know, the, the root part of it. But all of these things we're going to roast together. And this is the delicata squash. And uh, I'll sh I'm going to show you how to, how to cut this. Um, what's different about a delicata is that you can eat the skin, especially in the younger versions of them, as, as you know, 
the earlier part of the year, you can eat the skin. As it gets later, like maybe into you know February or March, you probably don't want to eat. Does it get kind of tart? It gets or? it gets just harder. Okay. You know, as they kind of age and and um, yeah, it's just a little bit Too harder. Too hard to chew. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just gonna take out the seeds. So I think your really sharp knife helps with that because squash can often be difficult to cut. It definitely, yeah. yes. I Yeah, I sharpen my knives pretty much once a week. Okay. And then I use the steel with them, you know, daily. Okay. More than daily. A couple, few times a day. Yeah, sharp knives are essential. Let me um, just cut a little bit of this delicata and into the size that we're gonna use for this. I'm just it gonna do some really little, good. isn't it nice? Yeah, it smells good. It's such a subtle, subtle, delicious. Mm, it smells delicious. So I'm just gonna cut them into little uh, moons, half moons. And put these guys in here. I was just gonna cut up this Gravenstein apple here. This is how I usually get gra the Gravensteins or the apples separated. If there's a little bit of a seed or something, you can just pick it out. And let's see, let's do uh, just a, a, like a finer chop than I okay. did before. This is a mirepoix cut, which is a big chop. So we can cut that in half. And if you have a flat surface, use that flat surface to um, stabilize your veg or whatever you're cutting. And we're just gonna cut even pieces. So these are all even sizes. Okay. And then we can take it, if you want very, very um, perfect cuts, you can square it up like this, cut it, and then I would just bring it back like that and just make nice little, little dice. Okay. And I can show you how to do a julienne too. Yes, please. It's interesting how different, if you cut things differently, they taste very different. Okay. So this is a julienne. I'm just cutting it very, Super very thin. thin. And I'm using my uh, knuckle here as a guide and my thumb is always back. So you, you use the claw. The claw is what we call it. Um, and using that as a guide, I will just cut really thin strips. So I'm just moving my, my finger back very slowly. The sharp knife helps with that. Absolutely. Yeah. It is, it's really nice. So we'll do the same thing and just kind of stack them all up together, you know, four or five pieces. And um, then we'll make these nice thin julienne. So you could use, if you're doing this with, a, with an apple, you can use this for a salad or you could use it for a slaw or mm, something. A slaw would be good, yeah. Yeah. Apple slaw, oh yeah. yeah. Fall, here we so go. Good. Yeah. We're excited about mm -hmm. fall. Let's see, we can do a mince too. So we have a small dice, we have a julienne, and then a mince, we'll start, we'll do a julienne. Actually, I'll use the, these pieces. Some julienne, just take the julienne and, and turn it into the little mince. Generally, I will keep uh, the end of my knife on the um, cutting okay. board, and that kind of uh, keeps you you know, in a solid place. Um, but sometimes you have to pick it up if you're doing something. But in this case, I'm just kind of rocking back and forth. And and so are you moving it back with your hand then? Or are you moving it forward to the knife with your left hand? I'm doing, I'm doing both. both. I'm, okay. I'm doing, I'm kind of moving the food with my thumb towards the knife. And I'm okay. also kind of moving the knife towards the food too. Okay. So this you can use as a garnish also. This would be really nice. Actually, we're gonna keep some of that and we'll use it for the top of the soup. And uh, one thing that I forgot, uh, actually I forgot a couple things, but we're gonna <laughs> add it in here. Uh, the carrot, the, uh, the delicious carrot that I forgot to bring to the table <laughs> at the beginning, but now we have it. Um, and that's gonna be in the bowl here with your other roasted vegetables. And it will be in your produce box. In the produce yes. box, absolutely. As will everything else. Yes. So I'm just gonna cut these into uh, the same kind of shape or the same kind of size, same basic size. 
This is one of, one of my favorite cuts that I do. It's just kind of a rolling bias cut. And it makes it makes for a pretty fast and easy kind of cut. I mean, this one's a little fatter, so I'm gonna cut that in half. And I'm gonna, just gonna add that in there. And we're gonna take all of these guys, I'm gonna put the herbs and spices on them, and then we're going to throw them in the oven. The shallots and garlic, I roasted ahead of time. Um, so it's a little different process than roasting these vegetables. So that'll be in the recipe, how to do this ahead of time. And then we're just gonna take, the, we're just gonna squeeze them out of here, like you would if you're doing a roasted garlic appetizer or something. You just squeeze them right out. So I cut the, the bottom off, put, put it in a pan with some oil, a little bit of water, and uh, covered it and roasted it in a 375 degree oven for okay. about, this probably took about half an hour. Okay. And then this shallot, same thing. I just threw the garlic and the shallot in the same pan with the oil and the water. And then we're just gonna separate this out. And these will go in a little bit later um, when that we're- That smells so good. Doesn't it smell good? It I love so roasted good. shallot. It yeah. adds it adds a sweetness. Yeah. And actually that's why I love to do a roasted vegetable rather than just do it in the pan because uh, it adds such a depth of flavor. You get mm -hmm. some caramelization, mm -hmm. and you got uh, just that roasted flavor is very different than just a sauteed flavor. Mm -hmm. So we'll add the shallots and garlic at the, at the end when we're uh, pureeing everything. Okay. And what is this? That <laughs> is another little happy accident. Um, that's ginger, and ginger is also going to go into this uh, beet carrot ginger soup that we're making. Um, and I'm just gonna cut this up. This is gonna go in a little bit later too, so okay. it's okay. Um, and I'm just gonna show you a little technique on how to peel ginger because okay. you don't wanna, um, you don't wanna use a knife. Uh, you can use a knife or a peeler, but um, a lot of times you'll take too much of the, the meat away. So we're just gonna peel the garlic with the with the spoon. It makes it a lot easier and you don't take as much meat off of it. Makes it really easy. It's a little difficult when it's a little knobby like this guy is, but you know. Are you using that whole thing in the recipe or just part of it? Just part of it. Okay. And actually this is something that is definitely up to people's taste. Kind of okay. like salt or honey or or you know when we when we add the orange. That's definitely, you know, recipes taste. are more of a guide yeah. and um, especially with things that are really um, potent, you wanna just kind of, you know, add as you, um, you know, add a little, taste it, okay. add a little, taste it, see what you like. It smells delicious. Yeah. So we're just gonna do that. And then we're gonna, this will go in a little bit later too. We're gonna throw this in when we, when we add the um, garlic and ginger, or garlic and um, shallots also. Okay. And we're just gonna cut that into little pieces like this so that it will cook. Okay. Grind up really easily and then it'll cook really easily. Next we're gonna just uh, add some oil and a little bit of the spices, throw it on a pan and uh, throw it in the oven. 375. Okay. And they, this will take, depending on how big your pieces are, but my pieces will probably take about half an hour. Okay. So, you know, some will be a little more roasted, some will be a little less roasted, um, but it's, um, it's... Do you need to turn them or anything while it's cooking, or you just... It honestly depends on your oven. If okay. you need to turn things, like I have a convection oven at work, um, and I need to turn things, and then I have a non-convection oven at home um, that I don't really need to turn things, but, okay. I, but I, I'll change position of the pan. Change the rack? Yeah, okay. so it's it depends on your oven, definitely. Okay. So here we go, I just have a nice little olive oil. And I'm gonna add, I have a little salt and pepper mix here. And this is definitely up to your taste too. You can uh, finish um, with, we'll, we'll finish up by, by adjusting seasonings too. Okay. And then this is some nutmeg, which is a great flavor mm -hmm. that you can use in savory dishes and in sweet dishes that I, I absolutely love them on, I love it on vegetables. This is ginger, so we're gonna mimic the dry ginger with the fresh ginger. Um, and this is a little dried marjoram, which I absolutely love too. The flavor of marjoram is really interesting. And it goes really well with all these other flavors. And then I have a little extra pepper. Okay. Because we're gonna add some salt with um, the 
the veg base that we have too, or the veg stock. But um, but this is um, just a little bit of of um, salt to bring out some of the sweetness in okay. those in those veggies. And I just do a little toss here, a little toss. Make sure everything's all covered. And then we'll put it on our sheet pan. Here. There you go. You just toss it on there and perfect. Yeah, just spread it all over. Yeah. Roast it in our oven and then it'll be all ready to puree. Great. Now is a great time to take a break and learn a little bit more about Northwest Youth Services and some of the great programs that they offer. Outreach is Northwest Youth Services' primary connection point for youth who are currently unhoused or disconnected from resources. Our outreach services can be found in our schools, libraries, and events throughout the county. They're designed to meet youth where they're at and to build relationships and connections to resources and basic needs that can effectively end their experience of homelessness. Northwest Youth Services' rapid rehousing, transitional, permanent, and temporary housing provide affordable housing opportunities for young adults. While accessing housing through our organization, all young people are supported by a case manager who assists youth in setting and achieving their individualized life goals. A full list of all of our resources can be found at nwys.org. So let's uh, talk about the salad. I was just yeah. going to show you how to how to cut a couple of the greens that we're using today. Um, like I said, we have the beet, the beet greens that I set aside before. I'm going to use the stems and the greens okay. for our salad because why not? You I've know? always been curious if you use the stems or not, and I normally don't, but I'm excited to see exactly. This. Well, they're so young and yeah. and soft. If it's soft, honestly, you can eat it in a salad. You know, okay. I, I like chunky salads anyway. So I'm kind of a, if you've, if you've had a salad at the restaurant, you've, you've noticed yes, the, the chunky salad style that I have going Delicious. on. Delicious. <laughs> so I'll just cut up, cut the uh, stem up a little bit and then I'll take these guys and I'm going to do a little chiffonade on these, which is uh, a fancy word okay. for um, julienne. Oh, it's okay. It's the same thing, but if you're, if you're cutting um, leafy, greens, le herbs, greens, whatever, um, into a julienne, then it's called a chiffonade. So you're kind of rolling it up into Roll it like up. a little Exactly. Tube. Okay. And then you're just doing that same rocking motion that I was doing before. Okay. And then if these are kind of bigger leaves, you can take it, turn it, give it a little chop right there. So there you go. There's a start. So would you do this with other Leafy greens like kale. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. One of my things that I always say is um, it needs to be eatable and it needs to be edible. Okay. So that both of those things matter. <laughs> so being edible is like, this is edible because it's not rotten. But being eatable is like, does it feel good in your mouth? Yeah. Does it does it make sense? Does it taste good? You know? Okay, so this is I'm gonna do the same kind of thing on this. Okay. Um, but actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of a different cut on. Okay. This. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the leaves and make them into kind of the same size, and you can do this with ch charred kale, um, lettuce, anything that you have a kind of a big leaf. And then here's an eatable size, right? Just like what we were just talking about. So that's a nice little okay. eatable size. So there's the charred, and then we're gonna. Uh, do the sugar loaf here, and this is a chicory. It's kind of a, it's a kind yeah, of a big I, guy I, here. I don't think I've ever seen one. Yeah, this is from springtime. They do all sorts of different interesting um, greens and stuff that I absolutely love. Um, I'm gonna cut it kind of like a cabbage, and this, like I was saying before, is kind of a um, a little bit bitter, bitter, because all of the chicories are kind of bitter. But this one is um, a, the kind of the sweetest of the bunch. So I'm gonna cut it in half. So is the whole thing sweet or is the heart of it sweeter? It's It kind of gets a little more bitter. Bitter in the yeah, center? Yeah, okay. exactly, yeah. And I, pr I probably wouldn't use the big, like really dark or really thick leaves for okay. a salad. I would save this part. 
I'm gonna save that for, I can throw that into a soup too, okay. or a garnish for something, or um, there's so many different things, like I pretty much don't throw anything away. Okay. I just use it in something else, you know. Um, so for this, the same kind of thing, but I'm gonna cut it in half to make it a little more manageable piece, and then I'm gonna do that same thing that I did with the chard, and just cut it into kind of eatable pieces. And also with a, a you know bitter green, you don't want a huge bite mm -hmm. of something. So you can do a little bit smaller pieces. So if somebody's not able to find this at the grocery store, what would be an, a good alternative? You know, any greens that you add for di that have different textures or okay. different flavors are great. You know, I mean, these are all kind of sweet. Um, and then this one has it's bitter is bitter, and then you get the crunch from a romaine or or um, I've like been a bok using. Bok choy, maybe. You can use some bok choy. Yeah. Why not? Or a napa cabbage, maybe. Oh, I love napa yeah. cabbage. Okay. Cabbage of any kind is great in a salad. But honestly, I mean, you can cut veggies into, and I I just love any kind of veg in all, a salad. All the veg. All the all veg. The things. All the veg. So I'm just going to toss these guys, these guys together, and we have a bunch of other greens that that we'll add later, but um, and to make a really interesting salad. But right now we have this delicious blend of all these different greens, and yeah, make it you know make it interesting. Just throw in all sorts of different stuff. Um, I'm going to show you now too how we do our vinaigrette. This is a really super simple vinaigrette that I use at the restaurant. Um, except for this time I'm adding a little bit of mustard because I think it makes it um, a little, it's a little easier, it comes together a little easier in the is it emulsion. Like a binder with the mustard? Exactly. Okay. Yep. So it emulsifies a lot easier. Emulsifies. <laughs> so I'm going to use those uh, roasted chalice that we okay. did earlier and I'm just going to squeeze them right out of here. Do you take the oil from the bowl that's left over and put it in there too, or just the shower? Oh yeah, okay. definitely. All the, all the stuff. All the stuff. Okay. Yeah, I tell you, I use all the stuff. It smells so good. I love, and this is so sweet. I mean, shallots are already kind of sweet, but these are just so delicious when you roast them. But I'm gonna throw in that. And next I'm gonna add the some honey and you guys will have your your recipe for this so do you just do honey for taste because you're or do you for con texture consistency you want to offset the the sherry vinegar okay. um so it's it's a balance you know okay. you want kind of some sweet but it's also a honey shallot vinaigrette so you want definitely want that sweetness and this will add some body also some of the stone ground mustard, um, mustard. And I'm just gonna kind of pulse these guys together here. I love my Ninja. It is a beautiful machine that does. So we're just gonna mix that guy together. It's, uh, we're just gonna push it down so, uh, so everything can get blended up again after we add some of the sherry vinegar and our olive oil and salt and pepper. Super simple. It smells so good. Super, super simple. And then, you know, this is another thing that um, you're just gonna taste, see how much salt and pepper you want um, and add some herbs if you wish. So do you make a lot of your dressings yourself? Yep. Do you make all your dressings all yourself? All the dressings, okay. all the dressings I make. I'm a little obsessed <laughs> with things, with food. That's literally Delightful. it. Delightful. All right, so here we go with our beautiful, easy, sweet, kind of delicious, earthy, vinaigrette. That looks so delicious. I am so excited to try this too. This is actually a really good time to take a break to learn a little bit more about Northwest Youth Services and some of the other programs that we offer. Mental illness and chemical abuse are leading factors of youth incarceration and homelessness. 
The role of our behavioral health team is to enhance and expand mental health and treatment services to youth experiencing chronic homelessness, substance use disorders, serious mental illness or emotional disturbance, or sometimes a combination of these things. We do this through substance abuse support and referrals for at-risk youth, by providing wraparound services for youth suffering from mental illness, and collaborating with other program areas to enhance our holistic crisis intervention and prevention. Another program we offer is the Vocational Readiness Program, which provides a spectrum of support services to equip youth in exploring and reaching their education and employment goals. Our volunteers and caseworkers help youth with their resumes, job searches, and the interview process. They also work to connect youth with internships and job opportunities that are a good fit. On the restorative justice side of our programming, the Teen Court program began in 1997 and is a partnership between Northwest Youth Services and Whatcom County Superior Court. It is a youth-run court in which juvenile offenders are held accountable for their actions by a jury of their peers. Teen Court is a diversion program with the goal of offering youth an alternative to juvenile detention. This program is based on the philosophy of restorative justice rather than punishment. This school-based program offers all participants, student advocates as well as offenders, the unique opportunity to learn about the consequences of criminal behavior and how it affects their community. Finally, given that around 40% of homeless youth identify as LGBTQ+, the Queer Youth Project is a program dedicated to supporting and advocating for at-risk and homeless LGBTQ plus youth. This program includes stigma-free events, family reunification programs, and safe medical referrals, along with LGBTQ plus youth safety and resiliency programs offered to community groups. A full list of all our resources can be found at nwys.org. So I just pulled the veg out of the oven. It uh, smells so good. Excellent, thank so you. Good. Thank you, so it's all sorts of different, I, I put it all onto one uh, platter here. Um, so we have the carrots and fennel and beets and, uh, and the squash. I have all, so all those veggies that we, that we cut up and threw into the oven. And we cook this at uh, about between 30 and 40 minutes, just depending on the size. So we're just gonna whiz these up and then we're gonna make it into a soup. All right, so I'm gonna use my ninja here again, which is my fave. We're gonna add a little bit of the seasoning, a little bit of the ginger, some of the apples, all the ingredients that I have here, um, with, along with a little bit of the, uh, of the stock. That way it kind of makes it, you know, easier to kind of grind up a little bit there. And I'm gonna add some ginger just so everything kind of gets pureed. Did you want to talk about the stock at all? Oh yeah, this is just uh, uh, one of my favorite easy things to do. You can either use the, the stock that's already, um, the veg stock that's already in the container. Okay. Uh, I use this, I use the um, Better Than Bouillon. You can get the, the veg kind at Costco now. Okay. I was excited about that. The only thing that's different is usually in the container, there there's not a lot of salt, but there's a there's a quite a bit of salt okay. in here, so you have to be really careful with how much salt you be careful add. Careful of your ratios. Exactly. Okay. So we're just gonna do the same thing that we did with the vinaigrette. And I'm gonna add a little bit more. As it kind of gets ground up a little bit, you just add a little bit more and then it keeps grinding finer and finer. Well, you can't really go wrong with all of these veggies. You know, it's so, so good. It looks a little weird right now, but trust me. No, I trust you. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay, that's p 
pureed plenty for me. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more just to kind of make it easier to come out of here. And then we're gonna put it into our big pot here so that we can cook it all together and add a little more seasoning, a little more spice. We're gonna add some of the ginger. I have some herbs here too. I, okay. add, I have a little um, thyme and some savory. Um, these are actually from Springtime Farm too. Oh, wonderful. And um, I just dried them because they were uh, they were gonna get a little, um, they were drying out anyway. And I just dried them so that they didn't go bad. And then I'm gonna do some dry ginger, just like we did on the vegetables when we roasted them. There's a little nutmeg, a little extra, extra um, pepper. All right. Just move these things over here so we can get to the, let's, would you like to stir this a little bit? That's kind of hot, be careful. We're gonna have to, um, we're gonna add the, the orange too. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna grate a little orange zest in there. And okay. how long do you cook this for? That will cook for, I'd probably just wait until the, the um, flavors kind of blend together, at least like 20, 30 minutes, something okay. like that. And I'm gonna just taste it and see where we're at here, see what kind of, you wanna try it too? Yeah, please. See where we're at. Thank you. Woo! Yeah, needs a little time. Yep. Oh, it's, it's really good though. Time. It's a good base. Yeah, you know what? I think I want to add a little more um, salt and pepper. I would agree. And then maybe we add the some orange more. zest is really good. Excellent. Maybe we add a little more of the the, um, the base too. How yeah. much do you want in there? Let's whisk it a little bit and then let's put a couple cups in there. Perfect. Good. That's, uh, we definitely want, want that in there so as it's cooking down, um, you know, it can always be a little too watery and then you just cook it to whatever Simmer consistency it down. you want. Yeah. yeah. Okay. While this finishes simmering, let's take a quick break so you can learn about all the ways that you can help homeless youth in your community. Since 1976, Northwest Youth Services has been the doorway to safety and the pathway to progress for thousands of young lives. Much has changed in our communities during those years. What has not changed is our commitment to supporting the uniqueness of each youth served. We invite you to join us in ensuring that young people from all backgrounds in our community have a place to belong. For more information on ways to support youth experiencing homelessness in our communities, including virtual volunteering and donating, please visit our website at nwys.org or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So this is what your meal should look like. We've got the delicious soup and this beautiful salad. I'm really excited to eat this. So tell us a little bit about plating skills or plating advice. Well, you know, it probably goes right back to what we were talking about with the salad when we were cutting all the greens. Um, is, it, is it eatable? Um, you know, I mean, these, if you're using these quality ingredients too, it pretty much speaks for itself. So you don't really have to do too much zhuzhing. <laughs> um, you, you can just put it on the plate and you know, it just already looks beautiful. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, and then we're just gonna garnish this a little bit here. Garnish is always good, but it also, you know, it mimics the flavors that we already put in there. So there's some apple, some of the herbs. And then we're also serving, uh, everyone has a, a multigrain or gluten-free roll okay. with, their, uh, with their basket today. So, so we have the multigrain roll right there and these are made fresh in house too. Oh, and wonderful. So is the gluten-free bread, so. Okay. That tastes perfect for today, considering we have thunderstorms and crazy yes. rain, this is perfect. Yes. That ginger will warm you right mm. up. Yeah. I mm. think we should also sample some of the wine that's in the kits I for those so who too. bought the kits at home. This is wine from Dunham Cellars. This is in your box. Excellent. Cheers. 
That is so good. Mm -hmm. This meal has been amazing. This has been such a great time spending this evening with you. Definitely. Is there anything you would like to share with our viewers about your business, your hours, your location, anything like that? Um, yeah, our hours change uh, quite often uh, due to COVID and, and whatever else is going on, you never know. Um, so just check our website, um, that is uh, Bellingham Cosmos Bistro, um, or you can check our Facebook page, Cosmos Bistro, and um, Instagram, of course. And you can see um, what's coming up as far as specials, what we're, you know, what, what we have this week, um, any new exciting things that are coming up, and and we're hoping to, you know, start doing some more fun things again. So yeah, so we're gonna so definitely check in on that. Great. Thank you so much, Sinman. This has been such a fun evening. Absolutely. I'd also like to thank our sponsors again for helping us with this evening: Inco Construction, People's Bank, Birch Equipment. Cosmos Bistro, Big Rock Roadhouse, La Fiamma Wood Fire Pizza, Veritas Media Productions, and a special thanks to Rice Insurance, Larson Grove Certified Public Accountants, CPI Plumbing and Heating, Seeking Health, Logan Creek Senior Living, Peace Health, Land Title and Escrow, Windermere Property Management of Oak Harbor, Marla Chapa Keller Williams, the Hanson Home Team Keller Williams, Skagit Valley Hospital. And if you're still looking for ways to help, you can donate, volunteer, advocate, or follow us on any of our social media channels. Again, thank you for following us this evening. I hope that you enjoy this lovely meal and that you are sharing it with people that you love. Thank you.